Yes. How are you Not feeling? Sure. Uh, bittersweet. Bittersweet. I mean, this. Um, if, if this, if, if we just did a panel, it was kind of emotional, and and um, you know, you, you you feel it as you as you as you're doing this, and but then you get the panel, and there's three thousand people in the room, and you know, it's just the synergy of it. So it's it's um, it's bittersweet. Yeah. And you're you're in a very unique position because you're the you're I mean Stephen is around but you're technically in the current timeline the last OTA member yeah. standing mm -hmm. and where does where does that leave you where does that leave you in terms of the team in terms of your personal life because we haven't we also haven't yet seen um, you know your second son come into the picture so yeah. how does that do your life change going forward well some of that we'll see. Um, obviously, you, you don't you don't have an, an Oliver Queen without Diggle someplace near his side, so you th that's part of our season. But um, also, just kind of, we'll, we'll wrap up those questions. There's a lot of questions that are answered in ten episodes, which which prevents, pre presents a bit of a challenge to the writers, um, but also makes each episode kind of its own little movie because we're getting to the point very very quickly. And for Diggle's story, it's what happens between he and Lila, who's the leader of Argus, what happens between he and his children who grow up to be influential in the future. Is he or is he not Green Lantern? Those are kind of the big questions. Yeah. On that subject, that, yeah. because there's been all these seasons. And this past season, you know, you have, I mean, you just said that it's literally named Stuart. Right? Yeah. So you're John Stuart Diggle. Yeah. I mean, what are the chances that Colin Green is part of Diggle's future in the yeah. final season? You know something? It's uh, I I don't know the if I had to put a percentage on it, I don't know. Um, but it better be a big payoff, guys. It's been six <laughs> seasons of them talking about this. You have you seen the new wardrobe? The new costume just came out. It's like another nod, right? It's like of all the colors. <laughs> now he has a green helmet, a green piping in his suit. So yeah, these things will be answered, and. Um, I think you guys will be happy with it. So is it yes? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. No, I mean, you'll be happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think about the, when you heard about kind of the new timeline and the flash forwards, and how do you like that kind of character that you find out, and some things are, um, are preordained sort of in comic books and stuff, but the idea that Diggle's got these two sons that are now, you know, yeah. maybe not what you might want Diggle's sons to be, at right. least one of them. Yeah. Um, what what do I think about that in terms of just how where the story goes with that? Yeah. Um, I think that's great. I think that's great. I mean, it just somebody as uh, and well, you'll see that. You know, if if anyone should have a, a a home that is somewhat in order and everyone's kind of in line, you would think it would be Diggle, and you find out this season that none of that happens for Diggle in the future, right? So, I, and I think that's great. That's the curveball. You want you want that's far more interesting. I think for his arc, um, but we answer the question as to why and where they are. I don't want to give out too much too much away about these these brothers, but um, they're pivotal, and you find out what Diggle had to do with it. Yeah, and 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 we'll be ironing some of that out too, right? Like you said, he's he's ultimately a steward. He didn't take the name. Um, maybe. It does, or maybe it doesn't change the season. When you went into this final season, did you have like a bucket list of things you want to do that you've asked about? Your Besides certain ring, are there things that have been on your bucket list that is that you will get to see without getting any spoilers? Um, yeah. What goes on with he and Lila is really important to me. You know, just Diggle has has uh, always kind of been. I I think I think probably the one of the more centered characters. He has a family, he has a child. He's about probably, I've always seen him as like three to five years uh, ahead of, 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 of Oliver, just in terms of his development as a, as a, as a vigilante and, and as a, someone who balances this family life and vigilantism, right? And, um, and he's done it well. So I, I think we have to answer that question. She's the leader of Argus, which, you know, I wouldn't call them nefarious, but they're, a, you know, you know what kind of corporation they are. So I, I think we have to answer that. What happens with that relationship? 
Will what there be a what? Is there a character that you would like to see most in the final? Yeah, I, you know, I've always been partial to Mano Vanette and Deathstroke. It's just me personally. You know what I mean? I just always, I've always just loved that character and loved his portrayal of it. Um, I just can't imagine anyone doing it better. He's just, he just, season two, I think was our best season. And it is, it is, it's in no small part because of Mano. He was, he was incredible. Yeah. Well, I know you, I mean, I know there's not much you can say about and the last question, sorry. I know there's not much you can say about the crisis, but it's one of the most iconic stories of, the, of all of this comment. What is it doubt. like for you, after eight years on the part, is get to be part of that as Arrow goes out? It's just, it's just one more thing that is like, wow. No, I mean, man, nobody could have called this, right? I mean, and it's, it's, it's just lightning in a bottle over and over and over and over and over again. So you just kind of realize that and you become real grateful for it. And just go, okay, thanks. You're excited, yeah. basically. Very much so, and and grateful. No, I mean, I think my, my process, I, I let them do them, you know, and, and they also let me do me, you know, they let, they let me, you know, kind of, you know, interpret and dictate the energy of Renee. Um, but I mean, I, I think, I would have liked personally to see Renee fall in love. You know, that's something that I wanted before the show ended was to see him open that door, to see that side of him. Um, you know, we saw him with his wife and how she dies and tragically. Um, but I felt like last season would have been a nice opportunity to kind of see him, you know, with Oliver's half sister maybe fall in love and open that door. <laughs> but that never happened didn't happen she she was evil she was she was bad um and so uh you know i, I i'm I'm I, I do love the idea of him just being a dad and we seeing that you know his daughter is the love of his life yes yes she is yes she is and in regards to to zoe mm -hmm. you know we have a pretty big gap now to fill uh being a child in the present day storyline yep. to jump to future where yeah. she is just total badass yeah. has a very at least as we saw in the beginning of season seven had a very different relationship to renee than she did when she was a kid so how does how does season eight how, how does their relationship develop we're obviously not going to get too much into her teen years but yeah. how do we go from a to b right i mean that I, that's a very good question i you know we have 10 episodes so and there's only so much real estate we have to kind of cover that. Um, I think more importantly, what we'll try to do is kind of see her, maybe find a perspective for her while Renee is on the road to becoming a politician. Because he does become mayor. We saw that in season seven. So there's a roadway to that, right? So we need to see a little bit of that. So how does she feel about that, you know? Is she proud of him? Is she not proud of him? Um, does she like who he's become? You know, obviously we see that she doesn't in the future. So we'll probably see a little bit of that. Are we going to see her journey of becoming Black Mary since the first season? Like, what I don't know. I mean, she's really young right now, like in the present day. And then she's well, it's 20 years later, so she's in her early 30s, I want to say, late 20s, early 30s. So I, I'm not, I, I don't know if we'll get, we'll get that far, you know, because I, I would know we'll have to find out like when exactly she became the canary in her life for, for us to know. So that's difficult. Because you guys have the biggest crossover of all time coming up. But yeah. I'm not going to support it, don't worry. Yeah. Given that how big it is, yeah. as an actor, what is it like to be? What is it like to get to be part of that? You know, as Arrow goes out, and also ending on one of the biggest stories I've ever had. It's incredible. It's um, I you know, very grateful to be a part of something. Also, very grateful to be a part of playing a character that no one else has played. A character that's been so obscure and kind of take Wild Dog and bring him out into the light. And I love that. You know, I love. Uh, being a part of that. I love the idea that when we first saw Renee in the first in the season five crossover, he was, you know, had this banter with uh, the Flash and Supergirl. You know, like to me that's iconic in terms of who Renee is. And I hopefully this season, uh, for this crossover, we get to see him connect with more people. But don't miss the uh, 
my choreography is in each episode because I feel like any cast member that joins the show um, eventually end up looking you know, healthy and hot and in shape. For the next episode, we're going to be in um, martial arts. Like that too, well, I, yeah, I think um, I think uh, to be honest, I think definitely Arrow has, and again, I said this on a panel was like Steven set the tone, right? Like he came in here as an athlete and brought something to Oliver, and so it, it, it didn't. I couldn't come in there looking like a guy who was ex-military, somewhat of a Navy SEAL, and not look the part. You know, it's just like you gotta kind of do something in the gym. You know, throw a weight around or something, you know, don't waste your time in there. OK, so that was the plan was just kind of like get in there. And I think it's become a part of my life. Like, I think I've always loved boxing. And so boxing from that from now on will always be a part of my regimen. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, absolutely. I think I will take it with me forever. Absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss his, uh, his energy, you know. To me, he's the guy who I would have been a fan of if I was a kid. Like I, I wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't have been a fan of Oliver per se. I would have been a fan of Wild Dog, because I like the characters that have attitude. Those guys to me are cool. So uh, I'm proud and happy to have played him and to see that side of him. You know, when he gave. Flash and Supergirl major attitude. I'm like, yes. I love that. Like that's that's fun. So I won't miss that.